Hello everyone, welcome to the third lecture for Geography 101, Earth Systems. Today we're going to be talking about Earth's energy balance and the distribution of energy throughout the planet. So you may have heard that there's some pretty crazy heat waves going on in California right now that have sparked some um, wildfires. And that really relates back to what we're going to be talking about today and the distribution of heat on the planet and how that might affect some of the natural processes going on on Earth. And we'll um, talk about throughout the course how the distribution of energy um, affects how different landforms can form. So, uh, importantly, we should start by defining some terms. What, does, what do we mean by hot? and heat um, and energy. So energy is the ability to do work. And work is just um, a force acting over a distance. For example, if you had a box and you pushed it over some distance, you're applying work to that box. Uh, and your ability to do that is energy. Power is energy transferred per unit time. So for example, if you had a wire and you were um, had an elect uh, electricity going through that wire, the amount of energy going through that wire over time would be the power output. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of a substance. So kinetic energy is just how fast different molecules and atoms are moving in, inside that substance. So the temperature is just that average movement of all of those atoms. And heat is just the transfer of energy between uh, substances with different temperatures. So um, a hot object has heat um, moving uh, from the hot object to the cold object because of that temperature difference. So I think the best way to um, kind of understand some of these terms and, and energy is this video that really puts it well. So we're going to be watching that now. When you touch an object and it feels warm or cold, what is that really telling you about the object? Here I have a metal hard drive and a book, and I'm going to ask people to compare their temperatures. Which one do you think will feel warmer, the book or the hard drive? The temperatures. Yeah, tell me if one is hotter or colder or if they're the same temperature. How do they feel? Uh, this is slightly cooler than this one. Yeah. Oh, that's warmer. Yeah, way warmer. Yeah, agreed. I'd say the hard drive is a lot colder than the book. Um, I don't know, because the book's got more knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think that is? Metal's normally a little bit chillier if you leave it in a colder temperature. Well, what if I said that they're both at the same temperature? What would you say? So you're lying. <laughs> but really? I think you're lying, yeah. Oh, jeez. Well, maybe the way I can prove it is I have an infrared thermometer. What do you think we're going to see? That's, that's, I think science might be able to answer that. And I'm not a scientist. Uh, I Make still, a prediction for me. I still think that, that that's cool though. Would you bet me money? I do because I don't have any cash. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's measure the temperature of the book. Okay. What do you see? 19.0. Okay. We measure the temperature of that. 19.0. <laughs> Alright, well now I believe you. <laughs> I'm trying to actually figure it out actually. I'm trying to figure out why that would be the same temperature. No, they, they don't feel the same temperature though. So why does that feel colder if they're basically the same time? Hmm. Good one. Do you have the answer? <laughs> well, I'm coming to you guys for answers. We're, we're creatives, not intellectuals. <laughs> well, create an answer for me. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. Come on, you tell me. Well, I'll try to answer that question with another little experiment. Here is an aluminium block. And Ooh, nice and cold. A plastic block. Yeah. How do their temperatures compare? Completely different. Oh. Completely different. Um, much colder. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, this actually feels colder. Let's take this to the next level. I'm going to put an ice cube on both plates. What are we going to see? Well, I'm guessing it would stay solid on this one and melt on this one. So it's going to melt on the plastic but stay solid on the aluminium. Yes, but I'm maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> that one will melt more quickly than on the aluminium block. Yes. You would think so, I think they're colder. Yeah, because it's colder. Let's and actually... I think they're going to go the same. All right, so we put an ice cube on each of those blocks. Wow. What are you seeing? Well, it is melting a lot quicker on the aluminium. I got it's melting. <laughs> this is melting quicker than, than that one. Even though this is aluminium, that's plastic. So which one felt colder? That this one. one. How does that make any sense? I have no <laughs> idea, you know. Well, could aluminium be bad for the environment? 
How would aluminium be bad for the environment? Well, it's thawing out the ice a lot quicker, isn't it? So, you want the answer? Yes. Yes, please! <laughs> please! It's about thermal conductivity, right? The rate at which heat is transferred from one object to another. Yes. So when you felt these blocks originally, I know this one felt a lot colder. Yeah. But you know from the other example we did that they must both be at the same temperature. True. Because they've both been outside for yeah. a while. We see that the aluminium block is melting the ice faster yeah. than the plastic block because it's conducting the heat to the ice cube faster. Okay. With the plastic block, it's a worse thermal conductor, so heat is being transferred less quickly mm -hmm. to this ice block and so it's staying ice. Okay. I believe you. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes, yeah. definitely. You know, in our first example, the hard drive felt colder even though it was at the same temperature roughly as the book. Yeah. And that's because the aluminium conducts heat away from your hand faster than the book conducts heat away from your hand. Sure, that seems logical. Which yeah. makes the, the hard drive feel colder, colder yeah. and the book feel warmer. Yes. So when you touch something, you don't actually feel temperature. You feel the rate at which heat is conducted either towards or away from you. Think about this next time you hop out of the shower in winter. It's much nicer to stand on the bath mat than on the tile beside it. Not because the bath mat is warmer, but because it conducts heat less quickly away from you. All right, uh, and so what was being discussed in that video was uh, a type of heat uh, and the thermal conductivity of a material. And so um, that really comes into play when we talk about conduction, which is one of the types of heat. Um, and conduction is just the movement of heat directly through a non-moving material. Um, and so you can see here that um, that uh, transfer of heat is proportional to the thermal conductivity of the material. And so if this handle was plastic, you probably wouldn't feel as much of that heat transferring through the handle as if it was metal. Um, another form of heat transfer and type of heating is convection. So convection is the movement of a material that's causing the transfer of heat. So you can see here the uh, pot is being warmed from the bottom and those warmer particles are expanding and moving up and that's causing a circulation of material to occur and that's how the, the heat is being transferred through the material. And then the last kind is radiation. So the formation of electromagnetic radiation, such as light. Um, and so all objects that um, are hot uh, emit light at some wavelength. You can think of objects that are red hot. If you were put a pot on a stove for a really long time, that um, object has gotten hot enough to start to emit red light. Um, and it, even hotter objects can emit even shorter wavelengths of light, uh, more energetic light. So these are the three different types of heating um, that we can um, transfer heat by. Um, and uh, important to realize that um, that heat and temperature um, are kind of coincide with each other. Um, so heat moves from an area of low of high temperature to an area of low temperature and we measure that temperature in, in three different scales so there's fahrenheit where things are boiling at 212 degrees fahrenheit and freezing at 32 degrees fahrenheit there's a celsius scale where water boils at 100 degrees celsius and zero degrees uh, celsius is the freezing point and then kelvin um, which is the not as commonly used one, but more scientific, um, is pretty much the exact same thing as Celsius, just shifted by uh, 273 degrees. So freezing occurs at 273, uh, and boiling occurs at three, 373. Uh, and so the zero point for Kelvin is what's known as absolute zero. Uh, some really strange and interesting things happen at that point, and we're going to hear about that now in this video here. There were more surprises ahead. In the 1930s, another strange phenomenon was observed at even lower temperatures. This rapidly evaporating liquid helium cools until at two degrees above absolute zero, a dramatic transformation takes place. Suddenly, you see that the bubbling stops 
and that the surface of the liquid helium is completely still. The temperature is actually being lowered even further now, but nothing particularly is happening. Well, this, this is really one of the great phenomena in, in 20th century physics. The liquid helium had turned into a superfluid, which displays some really odd properties. Here I have a beaker with an unglazed ceramic bottom of ultra-fine porosity. Ordinarily, this container with tiny pores can hold liquid helium. But the moment the helium turns superfluid, it leaks through. We call this kind of flow a superflow. Superfluid helium can do things we might have believed impossible. It appears to defy gravity. A thin film can climb walls and escape its container. This is because a superfluid has zero viscosity. It can even produce a frictionless fountain, one that never stops flowing. Superfluidity and superconductivity were baffling concepts for scientists. New radical theories were needed to explain them. All right, um, so there's um, really cool science that occurs um, at absolute zero. And one of the really interesting things is that um, at absolute zero, um, or when you start to approach it, that's some of the coldest temperatures in the universe. The, the empty space tends to be around two degrees Kelvin. And so potentially the scientists working in that lab were working in the coldest spot in all of the universe, which I think is, is pretty cool. All right, we're going to take a short break uh, and we'll, we'll skip to the next video um, where I'll be talking about different types of energy.